And here we go, folks. The final game of the 2023 Scrabble Players Championship in this best of five series. We have seen Joey and Josh. We got those names wrong on the bottom, but Joey Malik and Josh Sokol each win two games. Uh, the winner of this game wins it all. I'll be honest, I haven't been paying attention to the spread, so I couldn't tell you who's ahead head-to-head. -head. Um, I doubt we're going to get into a tie situation, but if it looks like that may come up, we'll get that information for you as quick as we can. Crucially, Josh to go first in Game 5 is John Chu confirming that because Josh had a better record, he will go first in this one as well. And he was able to switch back to the left side of the stream. So can Josh make it five for five that the player on the left side and the player goes first, uh, player going first wins the game? Or will we get uh, some, uh, Joey's shaking things up. High, high stakes. And Josh, a blank on the first. Oh. C-I-O-O blank. Does this bingo? No. Yeah, like, so he starts drawing and he gets G-O-O -O and it's not looking so good for him. And another G, he really doesn't like those Gs. He has a personal hate for them. And then the last tile he draws is the blank. It just changes everything. Uh, I don't see a seven here, but you can just play off Go-Go or Goo or something and be in a great position for next turn. Yeah, Go-Go, I think what we can expect to see from Josh. Uh, he's going to take his time. Make sure he's not missing a bingo. He doesn't have an anagram or a quackle um, in front of him, and he'd hate to miss a bingo again. But he is going ahead to play go-go here. And again, his patented vertical strategy. Uh, so 12 points for Josh. But getting the hold onto that blank, he has to feel pretty good about, uh, about all that. Joey now, A-A-E-P-R-T-U. And uh, no compelling options for him here. Perhaps Paua, P-A-U-A playing on one side or the other of Gogo, -Go, or uh, yeah, uh, making P, O, or O, P, or Paua down to the G, making A, G, or a tap with four overlaps, A, T, A, P, for 22. Okay. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, it keeps things a bit more closed, which sort of works to both your and my style, maybe not Joey's. And RUE, there's definitely worse leaves. He has a tap set up, and Josh has Epinawi set up. He's got both blanks. And if I mispronounce that, we saw the chat help us out with Manke, not Mank. So a lot of these words are unfamiliar to us. Please help us out. That's how we learn. A tap comes down, and this is a, a nice tight board to start things off, but it can definitely be opened in any direction. And the direction it will get opened is down to the bottom. Josh's only playable bingo, Epi Naoi, uh, slotting an I in the second spot of that triple-triple. Josh going to make sure he doesn't have to do that, but we can see that that's what's going to happen. And as Joey draws that Z, we'll see that even though Josh bingos with both blanks, Joey will have a big counterplay of Zineb to come down. So I'm seeing two turns in the future, folks. But uh, yeah, Josh likely to bingo here. And then Zoe gonna hit or Joey gonna hit him back with 57 with Zineb. Uh, maybe Josh could consider foregoing a bingo here, but all of his candidate plays OI holding two blanks. I don't know. You've got to bingo. You've got to. Yeah, I think here, you right? have to. Even though it it really hurts putting down two blanks, getting so little. And like you said, I had also seen the Epinawe Zineb or Zineb, another word I'm not quite sure how to pronounce. Sequence. Joey's gonna make sure that. Josh circled the right blanks, and uh, Josh earlier in the stream had both blanks, and he actually asked when we cut to the feed of the players talking, like, should I have uh, not bingo? Should I have uh, exchanged? I think that's what he asked. So I was wondering if he was going to come up with something really creative, but I think this is definitely the standard play, and oh, I just scores so little. I think you have to take your shot here with Epinawi, but it... It's not a great use of two blanks. It, yeah, but you got to do it in this situation. Uh, Joey, Zineb for 57 or Zebrine for 54, the two reasonable options here. I expect to see the higher scoring Zineb come down. Zebrine holding just a U. I am not a fan of that. I don't expect Joey to be either. No, and with both blanks out, uh, if there's any justification to playing long or going for those blanks, it's certainly not available anymore. This sets up an S-hook, and Josh will be very happy to have one. The S becomes pretty strong on this board after that play. 
Yeah, and Dobla is the highest scoring option for Josh, but I expect to see him play Bolds and Zinebs here as Bolds sets up spots to score on the left side. Uh, Bolds and Zinebs playing on the left side, holding on to the A, that only tile that's going to front hook uh, Bolds. I think that's what Josh is going to play, set himself I, up, score a lot of points, right? Is that your anemia from Joey if uh, that spot stays open? Uh, your anemia, but I doubt that spot stays open. He doesn't necessarily, he might not want to cash in on the S right away. Like, I agree, I'd be playing something there too, most likely, just because uh, the other options just don't look so good. But I mean, some players might play something like bold and aged, for example, trying to keep a nice leave, hang on to that S for another spot. So it's not, it's not impossible that spot. Uh, will not be there. So we'll keep an eye on that as Josh considers this turn. His decision here will be crucial because Joey has one of those racks where if you get your anemia down, it's 60 plus, it's a bingo, you're feeling great. If you don't get it down, your options are very limited and the difference in uh, valuation is just massive. Yeah, the only other thing I could see Josh doing outside of a Zineb's play is uh, perhaps trying to strengthen that S, playing B-A-L-D atop Zineb and opening up that line. But that is such an obvious setup. And Baldi also taking a back Y with three other unseen S's. I don't think it's worth it. I expect Josh to burn the S here and score points. Doblas, Bods, Bolds, something like that. I think, yeah, Doblas looks pretty good to me. Uh, Bolds also looks pretty good. He is going to play there. You could, Joey is doesn't give much of a reaction at the table, even though you know he's got to be uh, screaming on the inside. This is such a big shift in his win percentage. Yeah, yeah, as Uranemia goes away, he's forced to make a much inferior plays. Uremia will play alongside Doblas with four overlaps, slotting the U one letter in front of a triple word square. He's also got an other spelling of Uremia, U-R-A-E-M-I-A, -E playing to the A in Epineoi. Uh, but I don't see much else he can do here. Uh, that makes sense. I think I expect to see Uremia in one of the two spots, likely to the A in Epineoi to keep things open and to avoid giving back that big triple word spot. Oh, big draw from Josh. Nice and balanced, uh, as well as the X to score with. If he can just plop the X somewhere and look to bingo the following turn, he's looking very comfortable. But as we know, things can shift very quickly in this game. So... We'll see which approach Joey goes with here. Um, it looks like maybe he's just looking to play one of those uh, weird five letter words. Would your A play anywhere? Yeah, it'll play three overlaps to the right of Dobla's, again, setting up that U next to the triple word. Mm. I think his best play here of Uremia as a seven to the A gives back a huge X spot for Josh, but opening that spot as Josh also sitting on an S will give up a lot. Yeah, I much prefer that play. It scores way more. You don't need to keep the M here. Uh, it, it puts those R's and E's, well, only one R and one E, out into lanes that you could hit for bingos, and he's going to want to work towards a bingo. So I would like to see him find that play of Uremia with that extra E uh, A in the middle of the spelling. Yeah, yeah. Um, Urei will also give back a dues, a d i e u x the u for Josh, letting him hold on to the s as well. So that a really big option uh, for Josh. Both plays Joey can make here that make sense. Give back big plays to Josh as his rack is just so dynamic. I do want to point out this is going to be a thing later on in the game, perhaps a tap, a t a p. Uh, does take a sneaky back S as well as a sneaky front W. Um, so a taps is a bingo line, and that S, uh, conserving it, will be rather important for Josh. Uh, a D would be such a solid play in response to Urei, as would plunking an X-bomb after Uremia. Josh, uh, Joey, with knowledge of jo Josh's rack, has no good options. But, of course, he can't know that as he elects to play Urei here. Uh, so Josh, go ahead. This just seems to give back so much. I'm not... I don't really love this play at all. Josh looked like he was almost praying uh, between the turns. Like, he, Or maybe he had mentioned his back was really bothering him. Maybe that's why he was sort of tapping at his head. But 
he's going to feel really good after this comes down. He will have many different ways to respond to it. And it almost looks like a Z setup with the BI there at the bottom, but the Z is already on the board. So he can feel really comfortable just addressing that U and feeling pretty good going forward as a nice draw from Joey will at least keep his uh, chances here much more reasonable than they would have been without that nice balance return. Yeah, Josh has mentioned he's been struggling both from back pain and headaches over the last two days. And so uh, I wonder, head in his hands, if that's the headache, if that's hyper focus, if that's back pain, uh, maybe some residual noise he's trying to block out, anxiety. It could be a number of things. I do hope all the best for Josh. I hope he's feeling all right. Uh, Josh actually has multiple good options here. So adieu, 45 points holding N or NS, an awesome option, but can score 10 more with Axist. A-X-I-S-E-D, making U-S-R-E and DAD for 55, or N-I-X-E helps him hold on to an S to hit the big overlap spot next to Urei next turn, should he draw a five or a bingo there. So actually a pretty tricky turn. Uh, Jared, between Axis and Adieu, would you play off that S for an additional 10 points, or would you play Adieu and hold NS for 45? I think Axis doesn't give back as many bingos, if I had to guess. Uh, maybe next to the US that would be formed, you could form sevens there. But Adieu puts the, uh, the D in a position that could end a lot of bingos. Uh, I'd be a bit scared to play that. I like the extra 10 points. The S is definitely nice with the taps and ages. Uh, it's close. I think the computer would... Uh, would probably find it pretty close. When I say the computer, we use a program. Uh, often people use the program Quackle. It runs simulations. So the computer will play the same position over and over and over again to try and get values and win percentages as to which play is better. My instinct, having run many of these positions before, is it would be pretty close, leaning towards Axis. But I, I can't say with any certainty. I'd love to hear your opinion on this one. Yeah, no, they are back and forwards on a simulation. Axis running about 0 0.9 points ahead. I've been running this simulation since Josh drew this rack, basically. So uh, both great plays. I think with 1S already played, I like having that control of a tap. I like having the extra dynam uh, dynamicness that the S gives me. Sag and Ag is going to be in play. I like that Joey hasn't demonstrated an ability to play great on tight boards with the deficit already in this series. So all of that together, I think I lean towards a due, but ever so slightly. Uh, definitely a tough decision here for Josh. As you can see, he's taking a lot of time. He's holding his head in his hands. I do hope he's okay. I hope this isn't pain. I hope this is simply aggravation over what he needs to do on this turn. Like you said, it's probably a combination. Uh, Josh has a lot of scrabble ahead of him. He's playing in this uh, Westpac double down, so he'll be playing against the world's best coming up, and he'll want to be going into that tournament with this big win, and nothing will make your back feel better quicker than $10,000 cash. 10000 American dollars. For yeah. <laughs> For us poor Canadians, that's practically uh, the whole world. And I think that's uh, 80,000 Canadian dollars if my exchange rate is correct. Oh, wait, yeah. that's a little off, a little bit off. It's a whole hockey bag full of loonies, I'll say that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, ooh, oh, oh, Josh. Oh, oh is he? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Just play the X, come on. Yeah. There's no reason not to play the X there. Oh, well, that was, that was certainly a, a moment for the camera, but I do not like that play. Uh, I think with other options available, perhaps uh, he either whiffed on a due. I, I don't know why you would make that play in this situation. I think that's a blunder by Josh. Uh, it's it's probably not too far off. I agree. It's not exactly what I want to do. I like Adieu a, a bit better, but he did keep a vowel. Maybe he was a bit scared of consonant problems. It looks like the pool is probably pretty even. Uh, this also sets up a front B that he doesn't have. You can see Joey is close to biometer if a B was indeed available. There's one B already played. Um, Again, did you put O into your sim when you were simming the other two positions? 
I didn't even run it because it seemed so inferior. Uh, perhaps something Josh knows that we don't. He has drawn Lindy's after that play. Yeah, like his lead was probably more bingo prone after keeping uh, the ID as well. Just ID uh, LS, I believe he kept. Yes, ID LS. So that so would ID, seem, ID, uh, ID NS. ID NS, yeah. Like that would seem more bingo prone. Uh, yeah, it's close. He didn't necessarily need to go for a bingo, but keeping bingo prone tiles is always nice. Maybe he had the same fear I did about putting that D out in space. Um, but the E in space obviously is very dangerous as well, if not more dangerous. So we'll see how Joey reacts here. He's going to play more. I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah. Joey. This is exactly what he needs to do. It scores nicely. Um, it keeps lanes open for him. Uh, there's a seven lane now down to the right of the M and the O. And again, if I mispronounce that, please help me out. But you can't get caught fishing here, which some players might. Uh, you do need a score. So, And that draw is pretty decent. Um, not ideal, but I've definitely seen worse. Yeah, and Josh now with a bingo, uh, Lindy's on his rack, he's got to decide between three bingos, Lindy's making M-E and O-S alongside Moir, Lindy's and a taps uh, for one fewer point, I'm sorry, one more point, or sideline to the E and O. But I believe Josh going to score just the highest scoring bingo here, Lindy's and a taps coming down. Uh, will he hit the clock on this? Yes, he will. And uh, yeah, reasonable decision there. Grab Absolutely. You can't play sideline. You can't put the S into the triple A, and there's just no way you can do that. So between the different Lindy's plays, you might as well play this one. It scores more. Um, I guess you'd want to see which position the L would be in most dangerous. The L would be in the same position after uh, playing it next to MO or where he played it. So the other position would be the L in the seventh position or uh, sixth position if you played it with SAG. And I don't think there's a big enough difference to, to change the amount of points there. So he's going to go with the points. Yeah, yeah, he is. And uh, points for Josh, but then points coming back potentially for Joey. Soul Fight through the L scores 42 points. It does burn the S, but S is not nearly as valuable as they were a few minutes ago as the taps spot is milked. Many bingos will play alongside Moir or in front of AG. So Soul Fight, 42 points, or he can play C-U-I-F alongside M-O-I-R-E. The E-S-T leave is very nice. Uh, 27 points versus 42 is a 15-point difference. Not sure what Joey will go for here. Futile, another good option through the L for 30, holding CS. What do you like between those? Most points uh, well, it's, it, like. it's definitely what Joey likes. He likes playing with these nice balanced leaves, and EST is by far the best leave he's going to get. CUIF there will definitely set up a new bingo lane through the C. He can still end words uh, next to AG, either with TAG, for EST endings or SAG. Uh, and he keeps that triple triple lane open, which he might desperately need at some point. Uh, he, he probably expects Josh will play there. And looking at Josh's rack, he certainly will. But um, self fight scores a ton. It, it's very hard not to make that play. But with both blanks and two S's already gone, I definitely do see the justification in, in the CUIF play he's looking at. Yeah, yeah, no, I like all of these options. I don't know what I'd pick. I think CUIF makes a lot of sense with the availability of the bingo lines on this board, and uh, definitely the type of player Joey is. You stick to your guns. Uh, Daryl K. Royal, famous UT football coach, uh, I'm an alumnus of UT, said, you dance with the one that brung you, and uh, that's how Joey has played all tournament. You don't deviate from it now, or you ask a lot of questions. Joey or Josh with a big response through the L that remained unblocked as vainly helps him out significantly in a bad situation. Yeah, and Joey, uh, just with the one vowel, that's big trouble for him. He's down 119 here. Uh, you know, I said that last draw wasn't so bad, but it wasn't so great either. With the triple triple being open, that's when he really needed to capitalize. Josh is double blank early uh, bingo really took away a lot of the powerful tiles Joey would need to get back in this game. And it's it's starting to look difficult, but it's definitely not over. So uh, the CK has some nice uh, synergy. 
the EST certainly does. What can he? What sort of play can he make here to, to leave himself in a good position to bingo going forward? Uh, unfortunately, there aren't many options. Uh, probably the plays that help him bingo the most are terrible plays like T A C K through the A in Epineoi for just ten. Oh, uh, Stem and B I S uh, is the highest equity play for twenty-seven, holding C K T. But uh, there's not really any good option. He could also play Mac, a testament to Mac Miller, um, through the A for 12. A number of plays that burn the S to the right of your AI, uh, for instance, T-E-C-S or S-T-E-M. Maybe he plays long with a play like Ticket for 12, but this rack has just no good options at all for Joey. Uh, the longer I look at this play, the more devastating it starts to feel for him. Yeah, devastating is a great word. When you're down 119, when this is your last chance to win this event, you can't be telling me that his best plays score about 12. Like, that's just devastating. What a perfect word. Uh, not for Joey, of course. It's, it's really tough. I think you might have to just take the points with STEM because you have to stay sort of in range here. And, you know, the CK could maybe help get a really big play. Uh, the K also goes nice with that floating C that he set up earlier, but Josh is thrilled to see something like stem come down, seeing those nice tiles get burnt. The third S, there's only one S that Josh has to be afraid of, and this draw from Joey pretty much takes his chances from slim to almost none. Yeah, big point in this game is this pool is very skewed towards consonants right now. Of the 35 unseen tiles to Josh, I believe just 11 of them are vowels already. He's got two, but that is a big, big swing. Vowels are going to be at a premium for both of these players. Of course, you see that on Joey's rack now, but if I'm Josh, I need to try to hold at least one vowel nearly every play if I can. And I don't want to open this board in a game where I'm in great shape. A uh, comment from Cesar saying that if our producer can ask Josh not to post right away on Facebook if he wins, just because they're watching on the delay. Uh, so Christian, maybe that's something you could tell Josh if he does end up uh, winning this game. You know, I've got a better solution for Cesar. How about you just don't check Facebook for five minutes? <laughs> Uh, has that considered, have you considered that? Just put your phone away, put it on airplane mode. Everybody, if you want the suspense, phone on airplane mode, close that. That's, that's another good option. Uh, people are addicted to their phones and Josh, more than many, loves to post. He's always updating us on his many accomplishments. Uh, he is looking to play Fractal, play off six tiles here as mm. oh, now looks like uh, RC maybe. Yeah, Farsi and Fractal both open this board up, but you don't have to be worried as much, especially after a play like Fractal, given the unbalanced nature of this pool. Bingo's ending in a vowel are going to be hard to come by, but a play like Farsi, a bingo ending in ED, a lot more likely. So if I am going to make one of those plays through the C, I much prefer Fractal given the shape of the board. However, my favorite play here is Aft, AFT underneath Lind Lindy's. I want to keep continuing to close this board if at all possible. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, after Josh sees the nice bingo tiles of STEM come down, he thinks that Joey probably is keeping a somewhat balanced lead because otherwise, why would you play off those good tiles? But he actually didn't keep very nice bingo tiles. He kept uh, TCK, which is definitely not what you think of when you're thinking of bingo leaves. So it, it's a bit of a counterintuitive leave after STEM, as he's gonna go with Fractal, the play that you preferred of the two he was looking at. Yeah, I like, if you're going to make a play through the C, I like this, maybe C-L-A-R-Y, another option, but I don't like how that gives Joey the opportunity to play down to the Y and open this board. I think Josh far less likely to get burned given this uneven distribution in the pool after this play, both in the short and long term. So if he's going to play there, this was the way to do it. I like it. And Joey's got to figure out what to do as he continues dealing with these clunky, clunky racks in the absence of vowels. And Josh picking up three vowels on his pull, that's going to be uh, really hard for Joey to overcome. Joey wasting no time before right. he plays wax. That's nice. Front hook, but you got to score some points. 
that GN with the floating I is pretty solid. And uh, I mean, grasping at straws already, he's drawn so poorly in this game. Um, he's going to need some help to get back in a big pull here for Joey. Three there tiles, D, E, R. Okay, grunted. But because Josh played uh, Fractal instead of Farsi, there's no spot there for grunted. There is a spot with Dag. That would also open the triple lane if this stays open. But we know Josh is going to start to look to play some defense. So we will see what happens now. But uh, pulling into grunted is exactly what Joey needed, even if it might be a little, a little uh, too little too late. Yeah, yeah, Grunted or Trudgeon, it's Anagram, both going to play on this board, and that is exactly what Joey needed to get back into this game. We'll go ahead and display the unseen tiles now, as, whoa, Josh playing very quickly, going with Unify here. Uh, perhaps he doesn't like that he's opened this board up and wants to do something about it, but Josh could get into some serious consonant trouble, a Q still unseen. Uh, that could be serious trouble for him going forwards. I do not like this play. I feel like it was rushed by Josh, and he needs to dodge a Q and pick up some vowels. There is an E. Oh, wow, a great <laughs> goal for him. No, okay. Well, that's going to do it, folks. That draw was just beautiful for him. Uh, and the bingo is going to keep Joey a full bingo behind. And look at the unseen tools uh, tiles from Josh's perspective. They're not scary. Uh, J, V, W, K, uh, Q, Mm. And Josh Josh does have a bingo, uh, one bingo in this rack, very tough to spot, but it plays through the eye in Lindy's. It is Helistop, H-E-L-I-S-T-O-P. Uh, Josh, I wonder, oh no, it looked like he was setting it up, but hasn't quite arranged it yet. That's going to be an amazing play for him. And even if he doesn't see or foregoes the bingo, Thesp, T-H-E-S-P, plays alongside with fractals for 47 unseen pool is wild though j h q v w like jared was saying um joey has pulled some of it though and uh this one looking harder and harder for joey to win with every subsequent turn and every good draw by josh i believe hella stop is all but game over here I think he's going to find it too. I'm confident. Confident. He studies these words so often. Uh, you got to believe it. It's high prob. He will be so mad at himself if he misses this, even if he wins the tournament. It's so within his range. I don't know if he's writing out the alphagram to try and figure out the bingo. I don't know if he's checking his tracking. Uh, but he's definitely going to use some of his clock here, which is totally fine. He's got a lot of time uh, to think here. But a bit surprising he hasn't at least set it up on his rack. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it, to me, the I didn't even look like a bingo lane. It wasn't until I pushed the position into Quackle that I'm like, oh my God, that's that's there. Wow, that's a line. So uh, it's tough to see, tough to spot. I, that I deceptively, like, doesn't even look like a bingo line. Um, but Josh, I think also when he sees the bingo, he's got to decide, do I play it? Because disaster scenario is what you have to think about with this kind of advantage. If I bingo and draw JQVW, will I still lose yeah there's definitely a case to be made that maybe he doesn't need to be bingoing here uh his tiles are so flexible maybe he just wants to keep the power of knowing look at that uh look at that pool what could joey really hit me with like maybe he could have joe forming joe obis and el at the bottom right but that's not going to be enough to get him back in this game so uh, you don't want to draw too many tiles out of here. And you're right. If he did draw JQVW, uh, maybe with the shortage of vowels, as Hellestop, oh, it looked like he was arranging it. Uh, hmm. Would you ever forego the bingo here? No, not no, at all. I don't think so either. The lead is just too much. Mm, I wonder if Josh is going to miss a, uh, his second bingo in two games. Uh, that would be definitely uncharacteristic for him. Long tournament. Josh also played World Cup two weeks ago. That is uh, 60 now 63 high-pressure games, 64 high-pressure games, and uh, potentially playing the Worlds if he can qualify uh, in the last chance qualifier. So got to be some brain drain, but Hellestop is uh, something he needs to see. Yeah, we will see what happens. He has played so many tournaments. Nobody's played more of the circuit than Josh. He is just so obsessed with this game. H-E-L-S-T, uh, here it comes. 
He sees it. Oh, he's found it. Good, Josh. Better late than never. Take your time. Think it all through. And he is going to do his diligence here. What is the disaster? Could he bingo back? If he bingos back with something like Worthed, uh, could I lose the game? That's going to score a lot more than mine. I could eat a lot of tiles, but you just can't justify in this situation. By here it comes. And here it comes. I think this is it, folks. I think with this play, Josh Sokol is going to be your 2023 national champion. And I yeah. will tell him as soon as he wins, send Cesar a text message and spin <laughs> Uh, and Josh has won many tournaments. He won the Crescent City Cup going 15 and 5. Uh, and he also has won, I'm going to read them out because there's a lot of them. He won Niagara Falls playing in the Collins division despite not studying those Collins words. He won Montreal going 13 and 1. He won Kingston going 17 and 6. He won Atlantic City going 16 and 4. These are all tournaments that happened in this calendar year. We're only halfway through the year. This is one of the most impressive streaks of Scrabble I think we've ever seen. Yeah, just an absolute killer run from Josh over the last several months. And this would be such an amazing capstone. You can see him knowing I've dodged the queue. There's nothing that can go wrong now. Holding his head in his hands, maybe on the verge of tears here, or just trying to hold it all together has to feel so good for Josh, who has worked so hard. And I do want to say before we uh, turn the spotlight to Josh completely, a well-played series by Joey. Oh, absolutely. Particularly was beautifully played. And uh, everybody in chat giving uh, messages of support. You know, he's, he's played his heart out trying to get here, making it here, and he'll fall just short. But, uh, you know, everybody knows Joey will have his day one of these years. And Joey's been getting stronger as this uh, match has gone on. He's been playing really well, especially these last two games. He's given Josh the fight of a lifetime. Uh, both these players are so deserving, but I think the only question left is, what color Gatorade shower are we going to be pouring onto Josh's head? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So Josh putting on the hood because he knows it's coming. Exactly. Just kidding, we don't shower players with Gatorade here, although in Las Vegas, uh, perhaps somebody going to have some adult beverage waiting just outside the playing room. For yeah, him. a champagne shower, perhaps. And maybe Josh better grab Jackson's hat. It wasn't very lucky for Jackson, but it worked out very well for Josh. Although I know as much as Josh uh, said he was happy to play anyone in the finals, I think you know part of him deep down would have just loved to play against Jackson, win or lose. They have such a great rivalry. They're sparring partners. They've been friends for so long. And uh, Jackson was just so close to making it. A couple bad beats late in the tournament, but he also gave such a great fight. Uh, we got to see so much of him on stream. And as usual, he played his heart out. So this one now is just, uh, it's just in the books, folks. They're just playing out their moves. There's no reason to think this out. Spread can no longer matter. Uh, Josh has Joe to sort of end this yeah. game. What a better way for Josh to go exactly. out in this tournament than to set up his J. He missed his J setup last game, but, you know, got to do it here. Even though the game is out of reach, I can't think of a better way for Josh, a more stylistic way for Josh to finish this tournament than with one more of his clever patented setups. Yeah, it's just, I'm going against a player named Joey to end the tournament with you know, a form of his name. It's just maybe some salt in the wound, but I think both players are going to leave here with their heads held high. And I really hope everyone in the chat and who's going to be watching this later on YouTube when it gets posted has really appreciated this game and has seen how many tough strategic decisions there are to make. Even Matt and I, with the help of the computer, with the help of the chat, we still don't always know which moves to make. And we've constantly seen these players come up with moves that we haven't even thought of despite having all these things in our advantage. So Joe comes down and folks, yeah. you're a champion. Yeah. Joshua Sokol, congratulations to you. Let's cut to the overhead mic to catch these moments of euphoria from Josh. Congrats, man. He deserved it. He went better. You know, four days like that, you do that. You 
Thank you. Deserve to win it all. Nice game. Better seed. Beat me four times on tournament. That's <laughs> not what's happened before. Is that good? Oh yeah, I, I had no doubts. I was thinking maybe a top, but we got two other spots in here, so yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Josh being asked five minutes to wait to post it. Josh saying, absolutely not. <laughs> you know what? The last five minutes of the game didn't really have much to uh, uh, much suspense in store. So if he wanted to post it, I think it would be fine. And I just want to point out, I caught Joey Malik saying to Josh, uh, you deserved it more than I did. What class? Uh, both players, just such wonderful people and competitors. And we've just been in for such a treat. I'm so honored to sit here and call these games. And as am I, man, it's been an absolute clinic. We've seen some incredible Scrabble all tournament from Josh. And I, you know, he certainly deserves it the way he's played all tournament. Everybody's human. Everybody makes a few mistake loppiest, um, perhaps a little bit sloppy by Josh, but you know, he's made so many good plays on stream and a big, big congratulations to Josh. Uh, with that, we're going to start wrapping up our coverage of this tournament. But that doesn't mean y'all in the crowd are uh, are done here because starting on Friday, Friday we will broadcast the second part of the Double Down. Uh, this was the Scrabble Players Championship, but beginning on Friday, the last chance qualifier tournament uh, for players who haven't yet qualified for the World Championship. And shortly thereafter, on Saturday, we will begin our coverage of the Westback or World Scrabble Championship. So uh, tune now, in. Matt, one more comment, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Uh, just looking at uh, the updated standings here, it has Josh over 2100 as the rating. And I know sometimes with those buys, the ratings might not always be so accurate, but if that's right, he's one of the very few people in North American history to ever surpass that mark. So that's a huge accomplishment. We were talking about uh, Sid going over 2000 recently, which is uh, beyond an accomplishment, but 2100 is one of those things that at any given time, there's maybe, what, 10 players uh, above that level. And in NWL, I think there's only one. And after this tournament, I think it's just Josh. I think he'll be the number one player in all of NWL with both uh, Mac and Joey losing a lot of rating. So uh, not only is he our champion of this event, I believe he's now the number one rated NWL player in the world. Another huge accomplishment for Josh. Absolutely. Great point. And yeah, likely number one in NWL in the world by rating. That's a quite the feat. And yet Josh, such a humble guy. I expect you can find him sitting in a hotel lobby playing piano tonight or something, you know, going to keep or things more scrabble okay. or more scrabble. You're right. He <laughs> is playing in the, uh, the last chance qualifier as somehow he didn't qualify for world because Canada is just such a stacked country. So he'd like to make that tournament if for some reason he has a terrible last chance qualifier in CSW, he'll actually be joining me on the headset for coverage of the world. So oh. selfishly, almost hope he doesn't qualify because I'd love to hear what's going on in that national championship or champion brain of his. Wow. So I, I'm glad you let me get that in. I just had to point that out. Winning the tournament, a huge accomplishment, but 2100 and number one, number one folks in North America, all you people who have been following his channel uh, all through the COVID pandemic, when like everything stopped, Josh really rallied a whole community together. It really meant a lot to some of us who just needed something to really give us motivation during a time where the world seemed a bit uncertain. So thank you so much to Josh. What a great friend, what a great competitor, and uh, I'll let you wrap things up here. Yeah, with that, we will end our coverage. Once again, Matt Canick driving the car, Jared Capel joining me in the driver's or in the passenger seat today. So Jared, thanks for coming on. We appreciate your insight. 
big thanks to John Chu and Art Moore putting this whole shebang together, to everybody who joined us in the chat, to Christian and Andrew who have been running the, the stream on the ground all of this time. We couldn't have done any of this without you. And to everybody else out there, don't forget to set your calendars. Tune in Friday for the last chance qualifier and Saturday for our beginning or for the beginning of our coverage of Westpac. With that, congratulations to our 2023 Scrabble Players Champion, Josh Sokol, and we will end our coverage there. Thanks for watching, everybody.